Alright guys, uh, the GTK chapter 248 leaks came early, so this video, and I guess my sleep schedule as well, will also be good. Um, just to warn those who haven't either caught up to the manga, or don't want to be spoiled on current events, to click away from this video, and wait for it to be officially released and animated. Alright, so the chapter starts off with Yuji seemingly slashing Tsukuna, but it bouncing off of his back, showing us a zoom in of Tsukuna's looking unfazed and Gucci being in disbelief, screaming Higuruma as the Executioner's sword fades away. The second page begins with Tsukuna pummeling Yuji with his forearms and Yuji's put on the defensive. Tsukuna then kicks Yuji away and we see a panel of two slashes appearing on Yuji's face, similar to the other panels of people being slashed. The third page then shows the two slashes being partially blocked by Yuji but it still sends him back and it takes damage from it. We also get confirmation from Tsukuna of two big things. The first being that Higuruma did actually permanently take away the Kamutoke from Tsukuna, and the second being that Yuji has learned for a cursed snake, and um, that's how he healed his uh, torso so fast. Meaning that he learned a fairly high degree of Earn's Curse technique in a month to prepare for the battle. Uh, page 4 shows Uri with the Cloth of Swords and uh, Kiara Hoshi, which is kind of um, softcore like Hikari's girlfriend. Um, Tsukuna confirms that it was them who took away Gojo's body earlier as it just up and vanished, and this confirms Uwe's technique and the means of how it's done. Uh, page 5 is Tsukuna realizing that they are taking the wounded sorcerer to Shoko to be healed by um, RCT, saying, though that normally the efficiency of curing someone else is less than half of healing yourself, further stating that Shoko's reverse curse technique isn't as strong as his own or Gojo's further showing just how strong an OP Gojo really was. Uh, this whole time, his RCT was better than Shoko's, and her whole stick is, you know, she heals people. So it's, uh, it's crazy, man, but we, we love to see some uh, Gojo, Gojo glazing by uh, Tsukuna. Ending the page, though, is a uh, pretty cool statement by Tsukuna saying, In a month, this brat learned to use reverse curse technique. And I'd add a high level of that as well. Since to heal a limb or a large area of your body takes a considerable curse energy and skill. Uh, page 6 starts with Tsukuna stating that Yuji didn't just improve the body enhancement with using curse energy, and that Ino would be the main dish in the fight, which is referring to the um, curse spirit sorcerer. Saying he'll enjoy it a bit, and but also asking why he's getting upset. Page 7 starts with Yuji asking if Tsukuna was basing out. For the first time, we actually see just how truly poor and utterly unimpressed Tsukuna is with Yuji. Tsukuna has a long inner monologue asking if he's depressed because that sorcerer died, later being confirmed to be Higuruma, saying he's never thought about being satisfied from others, and he always ate when he wanted to eat. If he was bucking him, he'd kill it. If it was fun, he'd play. It's perfect to fill the boredom until he died, and that's just filling up the boredom until he dies. It's what others are to him. Basically, bugs and sex. Page 8 opens with a flashback to the Joko fight, with Tsukuna telling Joko the thirst to recognize the ideal and what you lacked from that. Saying he only lives on his own extent, that being unmeasurable to the other's problems. He never thought of it, the ideal, a wish which is more than your life. Saying to kill him is the ideal of those guys have right now, referring to the JJK sorcerers. Uh, having 9 starts, I mean, page 9 starts with Tsukuna asking himself, why am I getting upset from seeing people die to realize their ideal? He's never seen many of those a thousand years ago. But, you know, he's seen so many a thousand years ago, then asking, did I change after a thousand years? Then stating, it was Yuji that changed him, and that a thousand years ago the opponents he fought were others. Page 10 continues with him saying that there owes others reason, and the ideal were just more than last words, basically. Just a last shit effort to speak more. Which couldn't know the truth. There shouldn't have been imposters. There should have been imposters. Some might have just been in self-absorption. But this time it's different. Saying their souls coexist in the same body. He knows Yuji, and Yuji knows him. No matter how many times his soul breaks, it always comes back. Ending the page with an awesome spread of the two as side by side, kind of like the same coin situation, and Tsukuna realizes that Yuji has the ideal that is with indefatigability, which basically like um, an unfazing unfatiguing warrior worker towards a goal. Which is it's, it's pretty deep, honestly. It's a pretty big compliment from Tsukuna. 
On page 11 begins with Sukuna acknowledging Yuji as a twerp that is far weaker than him, but could match him in only the aspect of sticking to his ideals. Saying it's bucking the hell out of him. His life was too large, so he was unrelated to the ideal, and was a human that hated it. Ending with him chuckling, in this cuckoo coo. Uh, page 12 then starts with Sukuna saying that, not from coincidence, once again, definitely, I chose to shred up your ideal, referring to Yuji's ideal to never lament and end this battle against Sukuna till one of them died. Page 13 starts with Kogane appearing and adding a new rule that Fushiguro Megami will have the authority to activate the extreme merge between humans and Tengen. Which means that Megami, aka Sukuna, can now start the merger in place of Kenjaku, taking on his will from his death and beginning the end of Jujutsu society. Page 14 begins with Sukuna wondering if the new apparition before him looking like an embryo is Kenjaku's insurance, and that Yuta's ambush was a success and at the back of plan activated. We then see Kusakabe's perspective and him asking that Sukuna isn't the kind of guy who wants to get humans extinct, saying he thought he was better than Kenjaku since he wouldn't do cursed terrorism from his curiosity alone. This, however, seems really unlikely as Sukuna is a calamity by himself, having done plentiful heinous things in the past. Page 15 begins with Kusakabe remarking how they defeated Kenjaku, but if Sukuna beats them, they'll have much worse to deal with than the simple beast. Sukuna begins by saying he'll first kill Yuji and everyone else in the field, then he'll kill the rest of the Colin Gates players, and then, at the end, depending on the outcome between Tengen and the Nobodies, he might play with the fused Tengen. Page 16 starts the bang, showing Yuta has entered the battle and destroys the buildings they were on, saying, Sorry I'm late. Page 17 shows Sukuna's charge at Yuta with a curse energy enhanced strike, but Yuta parries it with a sword, having Sukuna tell him, Don't forget, struggle and resist. If you don't kill me, the ones you want to protect will all die. Page 18 ends the chapter with Rika coming out, smashing Sukuna to the ground, asking, Who are you saying it to? and a rather snarky remark from Sukuna of, here's the queen, ending the chapter with a narrator saying, king of curses versus queen of curses. The one to sit on the throne will be decided now. Sadly showing that there will be a break next week, but man, this, this chapter was insane from beginning to end. Uh, I'm not giving us the chance to catch a breath. And as much as I want another chapter since we were on a three week break, I'll give Giga his chance to cook up some more heat in the kitchen, but that's all I have for you today, so if you enjoyed, consider liking and subscribing to the channel to let me know you liked the vid and would like more content similar to that. And I hope you liked it, and as always, have a nice day, take care, and bye guys.